Whether you are a fresh postgraduate or an obstetrician, I think you should follow me to the end of this video. This is Dr. Nada, and this is another episode of Stay Updated with EMRCOG. And today we are going to have a concise overview of current recommendation regarding HIV in pregnancy and postpartum 2025 behavior guideline. It has been always our main target to reduce the HIV transmission and starting from the preconception period, we need to start the ART safely and we are going to counsel our patient that there are no risk for neural tube defect with ART and it's recommended to take the usual dose of the folic acid daily before conception like any other lady but it's very important if she is HIV positive that she should start her treatment ASAP. We are going to screen all patients as usual in their first antenatal care visit and of course this is going to be done for HIV, cephalus, hepatitis B as you all know. If the patient declines screening she should know that this is a major risk and she's going to need MDT by the way. If testing at birth is also declined, you need to inform the GP of unknown HIV status. And take care that not all your patients are going to need post-exposure prophylaxis. If her partner meets the UU criteria, U for undetectable, U for untransmittable. If the partner viral load is undetectable for over six months, that means that the patient is low risk and there is no need for post-exposure prophylaxis. Other women are going to need pre-exposure prophylaxis if they are in continuous exposure to HIV-positive patient. So we have two types of prophylaxis, pre-exposure and post-exposure. And both of them can be, of course, discussed with your patient in details. According to the behavior guideline, HIV is considered as a moderate risk factor for fetal growth restriction and this means that we are going to assess all the other risks for this patient so that we can plan her fetal monitoring and surely we are not going to do anything invasive to the uterus whether it was ECV or invasive prenatal testing unless we are very sure that the viral load is suppressed. The new recommendation regarding infant post-exposure prophylaxis is now risk-based approach and it's going to be classified into two categories, low-risk infants and high-risk infants. This is according to maternal viral load suppression at or near delivery. And of course, this stable suppression is because of good adherence and duration of ART prior to delivery. This is the most important point in deciding how long this baby is going to need ART. So if the baby is low risk, he's going to need ZDVD monotherapy for two weeks. If he's high risk, he's going to need multiple therapies or a combination for a longer duration. It's very important to remind our patient that the UU method is not going to apply to breastfeeding. So even if she is having undetectable viral load, still she's recommended to stop breastfeeding and use exclusive formula feeding. This is the only way that she can eliminate the transmission risk. And if she wish to breastfeed, then she must be strict to the ART and the viral load criteria. Whenever she is having viral load 50 or more copies per milliliter, she needs to stop the breastfeeding and we are going to start the infant PAP. If breastfeeding is chosen, the behavior specifies strict criteria also, which is ART for 10 or more weeks before delivery, undetectable viral load, close engagement with services, frequent viral load monitoring to the mother and infant at least monthly and this is the only way that we can eliminate the risk of transmission and stay low as we are right now worldwide so i think that's all and uh, thank you so much for following see you later